Welcome to 843 TV. I'm your host, Katherine Maidaman, and we are walking in the halls here at Bridges Preparatory School because their academic year is going to start in a few weeks. We're going to sit down and meet with Gary McLellan, who is the Chief Executive Officer, Valerie Bell, who is the Assistant Principal of the Middle School, and also Dan Tuman, who is the High School Principal. They have a lot going on this academic year, and I'm really excited to find out all the details. So stay with us, and we'll be right back. Eight four three TV, where the Low Country comes to speak. Eight four three TV, where communities come to speak. And welcome to 843 TV, and I'm so delighted, Gary, to be back here at Bridges Prep. There is so much wonderful things. Gary is the CEO. Gary Malik, I want to introduce you to. You know. I, I've been coming here for about three and a half years, and first time I arrived, we had a building being built, this building being built, right? And I was sitting in dirt. And then over the years, we've had this amazing building. Our student population is growing. There's a lot of good stuff going on. Yeah, there certainly is. Catherine, great to see you. Welcome back to Bridges Preparatory School. It is certainly an amazing time to be a Buccaneer. We have had incredible growth. I remember our first interview, we were sitting in dirt. Where <laughs> this building right now would be, which opened in 2020, and then we had a pandemic, and then we continued plug in away. And during that pandemic, we were able to keep our kids in with progressive scheduling because it was all about kids first and having them in this building and having that connection with their educators. And then in 2021, we were able to build this amazing elementary school. And then now we are at 1300 students. Who would have thought we would be there? Just three short years ago, we were at 697 kids and now 1,300 kids get to be involved in this amazing school environment. We feel his passion, don't we? You know, and I do believe that. I mean, no, number one, the school is it's newly built, the state of the art, which is great. Your curriculum programs that you've shared with us over the years is, is you know, super great for learning for the kids. I mean, in a minute, we're going to interview a couple, you know, the principal and, and vice principal of the secondary middle school and the high school. But with the programs that are going on here, so 22, 23 is starting in a couple of weeks. The kids are coming back. No more COVID. So what are we up to? Because sort of all those barriers are now taken away in front of us, right? Yeah. I'm so happy that you just said that. The barriers are taken away. We're not thinking about COVID in schools anymore. Let's get back to it feeling like school. Yeah. And when it's feeling like school, it's all about relationships and it's about connecting with each other. And we have hired amazing educators and also leaders that will promote those quality relationships. And we put that time into our schedule because it's so important for kids to be able to grow socially and emotionally. We talked about programs. So to have a really extensive and comprehensive STEM program in our school, we have worked so hard at that at, from kindergarten through fifth grade with Project Lead the Way Launch, which is a STEM infused program. And then you move to Gateway to Technology at the middle school. And this is where we're talking about weather and design and modeling and robotics and animation. And then you move to the high school. We've just had a partnership with the governor's school we will have kids that will be eligible in 23 and 24 to go into the engineering program through Clemson and USC with this partnership. And we are the only school that is doing you know, that. I, I, I was going to ask you about that because we've been doing a lot of conversations with edu higher education and also they're trying to facilitate businesses coming in for the economic development. So it's, it's a feeding system. So I really wanted to ask you about that because let's say, you know, they're, they're in their 11th and 12th year, and that student may not be ready to go to secondary school, and that's fine, you know, if they didn't want to go to higher ed, but yet giving them the, the skills to be able to take a trade up or have the ability to go forward with it versus just done, you know, you're kind of done, now where can you go? They don't have a, a trade or an interest or something like that. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? It sure does. So here, I remember we talked about that, that you're paying attention to making sure those kids, wherever they want to go, if they want to stay home and, and, you know, even just get a certificate to do, you know, cybersecurity is a big issue right now, right? Mm -hmm. Two kids who want to go into college years, but just having that governor's program, mm -hmm. 
I think it's phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, so how did how did that all happen? <laughs> yeah, so it's all about being college and or career ready. And we have now four counselors as checkpoints for our kids. So the development of our kids K to five with an elementary counselor, grades six to seven focused on social emotional supports of kids. And then an eight to 10 counselor is someone that develops that individual growth plan and then has the checkpoint in 10th grade so that you are continuing on your goal path when you go to the career development counselor in 11th and 12th grade. I never knew my counselors when I was in school. <laughs> and it is important that we know those counselors and develop those amazing relationships so that we personalize instruction and get kids to where they are going to be most success successful. Exactly. I mean, I can remember when you just said, I don't know, I remember my counselor, but I don't, I remember he said, well, I think you can go to this school. I don't think you can get to that school. You know, remember that you just didn't know where you were going to go. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just what it's, it was time. But that's one thing I, I have, you know, over this time when we talked to the various people, like I said, um, the the enthusiasm of educating the kids and getting them ready, that's that's the passion I see. And this community of Buford County is, is all in on that. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's, we are moving to our five-year strategic plan where I will be bringing in community partners, business leaders, and then our administrators, our teachers, our parents, and our students to develop a comprehensive plan that makes us the best in the state. And you know how competitive I am <laughs> and how I want to make sure that Bridges Preparatory School becomes the flagship school in South Carolina, and I'll stop at nothing to do that. I, I sense that, I have a feeling about that. And you're gonna to continue to grow. Do we have more room for uh, kids to join in? Do we have additional space now? Are so we... we have an extensive wait list right now okay. that is roughly around about 600 kids that are on our wait list. It's very heavy in the elementary. There is room in the high school right now. And if you are looking at that engineering path, what an opportunity to get involved with the governor's school in our school. Um, applications start, of course, December the 15th. That's right. So and then we have school starting in a few weeks as well. Yes. Well, uh, Gary, it's been wonderful to speak to you. We have other people to also talk to. We're going to learn about the middle school and also the high school. So be, we will be right back with more A43 TV.